Hey everybody, before we get started on this special video, I just want to let everyone know what's going on with the Jetpack Let's Play, just because I haven't been uploading videos lately. Essentially, it has nothing to do with the game, it's got everything to do with a surge protector that randomly goes off in my room and beeps incessantly for at least a couple minutes non-stop. I don't know what causes it uh, to happen at various times. All I know is that the battery is apparently nearing death, and I really need to get it replaced, and until then, it's probably not a good idea to play a game that has only one save file, just in case I need to re-record stuff as a result of the beeping. And I really don't want annoying beeping in these videos, just because this is way worse than my watch going off. I mean, it lasts for a while. And if it goes off in this video, I'll be sure to keep on going, just so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, this video is not a Let's Play video, this is just a just-for-fun explanation video, just for anyone who wants to see it, in lieu of the content that's been missing lately. I figured at least this will tie everyone over until uh, the videos for Jetpack come back, and I thought it'd be kind of fun to do anyway. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make a Chips Challenge level, and specifically the kind of the process I go through when I do it myself. Everyone has their own style of doing things, and I thought I'd just explain what mine is, at least for the most part, as uh, I show you guys this new level I made, which to this date is currently unreleased. Now, I need to provide a little bit of um, context for this, namely how to get a program to use to make these levels. I'm currently right here on Mike Lask's Chips Challenge site. And this is a great resource if you're interested in the game. It's got lots of links, and I'll be sure to put the link to this site in the description below. Now, the editor that I use, as you can see here on my computer, I use a Mac, and there's only one editor that works on Macs, and that is CC Tools. And you can download CC Tools for Windows, Mac, and Linux here on this page. And it's really awesome as an editor, I've got to say. Now, the level I've recently designed has been made for a contest on CZ Zone, a Chips Challenge forum where these sorts of competitions are regularly held. This particular competition is dedicated to the walls of CCLP2, um, CCLP2 being the first uh, official level pack as a sequel to the original level set. The uh, criteria for this uh, competition are to take a level from CCLP2 remove everything but the walls and make an entirely new level from it. And the idea is that you really want to make something with a recognizable wall pattern and yet something that's rather different from the original level. So I'm going to go here into CC Tools and it's right now I've got CCLP2 open at the moment. We're on level 1 of Fleeting Memory, but this is not the level I'm going to be using. The level that I've used is Switch Hit, level 136. Now let me kind of explain this level for those who've never seen it before, just so that you've got an idea of what the original level is like for the purposes of comparing um, this with the new level that I've constructed. This level is basically a block and toggle wall puzzle. As you can see here, Chip starts in the middle of the level and has a clone machine to work with, and from here he can push blocks to various water spaces while manipulating the toggle walls with the buttons scattered around the map. Chip also has to get the green key over here and gets to this chip up here, to, uh, which is accessible by this green door, and to the exit down here. He cannot reach this chip or this exit. So all in all, this level is a fairly lengthy block pushing level. Now let me bring up the wall pattern for this level. Now the rules for this competition stated that you can theoretically choose any wall pattern from CCLP2 although one that is more recognizable and distinct is preferred. So, for instance, I really didn't want to pick a wall pattern like, uh, what's a good example, um, this one, for instance. I suppose this isn't the worst example, but this wall pattern really doesn't exactly uh, hold much significance. I mean, this could be a part of any level, and it doesn't exactly trigger many memories of this particular level in the game. But Switch Hit, on the other hand, has more walls going for it. So it's at this point along uh, my thought process that I had to stop and ask myself what kind of level I was going to make. Now, there are several different types of gameplay styles in Chips Challenge, and typically when I design a level, one of the things that I try to do is I try to decide what kind of gameplay I want the level to exhibit primarily before I get started. And there's all kinds of gameplay types just by virtue of Chips Challenge being a very versatile game with a lot of elements. 
There are pure collecting missions where you scatter a bunch of chips all over the map and you have to go around and get them and then go to the exit. There are survival type levels where you don't have to get anything at all, but you have to find the exit and hopefully you get out in time. There are levels that are more maze-like in structure. Levels that involve a lot of monster dodging, some predictable and some much more unpredictable. Levels that involve swapping items. Uh, and puzzle levels that involve blocks and other elements and how to manipulate them. Now, looking at the wall pattern in this level, I suppose just about any of these things would work. But typically when I make monster dodging levels, I try not to put them in close quarters unless there's some element of predictability in place. So for instance, having a ball going down this long hallway down here at the bottom probably wouldn't be a good idea just because it's very hard to tell when it's coming. It's a lot better to at least have these sorts of, if there's going to be unpredictability, have it be in a space that's a lot more open. And if you are going to have more close quarters things, at least have the monsters be going in patterns that can be easily observed from one location. This isn't a universal rule or anything, but it's something that I try to uh, recognize when I build levels like this. I suppose levels that involve bugs or paramecium might work in a context like this where there are little isolated wall islands like this, but for the most part I just don't really see a very interesting monster dodging level happening here with this wall pattern. Instead, I think a maze might be more ideal. Now, I could go with a simple item swapping maze where, say, I set up a red door here, a blue door over here, you know, some element type thing over here where, you know, I can get to another thing behind it, and so on and so forth. But to be honest, the level still kind of looks a lot like the original one. There's really nothing aesthetically that differentiates it from its uh, predecessor except for the fact that there are no toggle walls in it. So, I decided, okay, if I'm going to use this rather recognizable wall pattern, and keep things in close quarters, I should probably make the level look a lot different. And that's when it hit me. I thought I'd make a level with a underground kind of theme going for it, with lots and lots of gravel. And there's a level that I kinda had in mind as far as inspiration is concerned, and that is Mining for Gold Keys, the, I think, 29th level, if I'm not mistaken, of Pit of 100 Tiles. And if you've watched my Let's Play of that set, then you know which level I'm talking about. It's also in CCLP1 as well. Let me show you the level that I eventually came up with. Right now it's called Chilled to the Bone, and here it is. So as you can see, this level has a few things going on. You can see that we start down here now, and the objective is to get the chips and eventually the blue keys needed to get to the exit. Now, I tried to be a little bit... Um, distinct with the aesthetic I had going on because I didn't want to just totally rip off mining for gold keys. I thought this level needed its own distinct identity. And so before I started designing, I thought to myself, what tiles did I want to put in here um, that could serve as the predominant tiles in the level, basically? In other words, these would be the main things you would see in the level, and there wouldn't be something that would stick out like a sore thumb, like say you know, a bomb here. I mean, that would just look kind of silly. I mean, I guess to a certain extent, if this were a level with a lot of random stuff in it, that wouldn't be a bad idea, but this level is meant to be a little bit more carefully designed and calculated. Sometimes random levels can be really good. I'm not the best at designing them. I think some people like, say, Rock Genaru, for instance, are way better at doing that, but I tend to make more calculatedly designed levels. And uh, sometimes that can be good and sometimes that can be bad. But in this case, I wanted to make sure that everything contributed to this very cold aesthetic. I put ice strips around the level like this. I put blue walls and water so that there would be blue elements as well. And for a while, I was considering the possibility of putting in walkers that were supposed to like function as ice crystals. Like, for instance, I would put gravel under them. And the idea, whoops, the idea would be that you weren't supposed to touch these. But after a while, I thought, you know, that looks like a little bit overboard, and I really want to have some freedom here when it comes to movement. There need to be some areas where you can be a little bit more free to move around, like this one, and you're not just stuck in some claustrophobic single space-wide corridor. So I decided to kind of leave things as they were and just pepper the level with some ice when it needed it. So 
here you can see that the big obstacle to navigating the level are the blocks and the water. And a lot of the challenge of this level comes from making sure that each block that you can use goes to the water that it's supposed to be used on. And I've tried to make sure that this isn't terribly obtuse just so that the player doesn't cook the level by accident, but there may be some cases where it's a little tricky. Now, there are some cases where you need to turn blocks, and in, in these situations, I've put obstacles like chips in the way, or blue walls like this one, so that you can only approach them from one side, simply to make sure that you do that before um, you collect the item. So, for instance, I'm up here, I come down this way, the block is right in this space, I cannot reach the chip with the block in the way, so I need to go ahead and put it in the water where it's supposed to go anyway, in order to get that chip. It's just things like that that help to make sure that no more mistakes are made and they reduce the possibility of failure, since there is some failure possibility as is by virtue of hazards like water and some situations where you could theoretically get killed. Like here at the beginning, or not the beginning, but over here, if you push this block up, you are going to get killed by it coming back from hitting this blue wall. So. One of the things I also wanted to do when designing this level is to make sure that dead ends weren't exactly two ways. In other words, well maybe that's not the best way to put it, but in other words what I'm trying to say is that whenever you got to the end of a path, you didn't have to go all the way back. In other words, you could open up a path that serves as a shortcut to where you came from. And for this one, I'll illustrate this up, uh, with this point with this thing up here. So let's just say you go, you want to get to this chip and you can't get there because there's this water blocking the way and there's this block, right? So you have to go all the way through here, you come up here, you slide over here, and then you have to go this way. Well, by doing that, you get instant access all the way back to this area. And in fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this water space because really you don't need that. The whole point of even going here is to get this chip and getting this one over here doesn't even require a block anyway. So, yeah, I'll just leave it like that and the player can just push the block into this water over there. No problem at all. I guess the only situation where you don't have to do that is if you just looped around, if this was unblocked, and you just pushed it back up. But that's as far as the block can go. That's the other thing I've tried to do here is I've tried to make sure that the blocks can't go stray for far from their intended paths. So like this one, I can approach it only from the bottom, and it can go up here only to the water. This one down here, I can approach it only from the top, and it can go down only here to this water space, and so on. Now, I've tried to put the flippers at the end over here at one of the more distinct dead ends, um, and still you can get back to the starting area here. But as such, I wanted to make sure that it was kind of at the logical end of the level, so you can just slip right back here, get the skates, get all the blue keys that you need, some of which are impossible to get, but the ones that you need are possible, and eventually exit. So that's pretty much the level, chill to the bone. Um, I'm hoping that it does well in the competition. I've got a couple of other levels that I've made for the competition, but I'm not going to show those in this video. If you want to see them, be sure to check out CC Zone on uh, around the beginning of March, which should be around the time that the levels are released in a pack where you can see everybody's. And after that, they should be judged. So uh, be sure to look forward to that. And I hope this was a good explanation for how levels are designed. Um, this level is Lynx compatible as well. I've, I've tried to make sure of that too, just because I do enjoy playing in Lynx. I know some other people do as well. So it is nice to have that functionality. So if you have any questions about designing or anything of the sort, just leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks guys, and I will catch you on the flip side.